For for this exercise, we're gonna create kind of like a curtain wall, so to speak, um, that is more accurate than what I showed you before. Okay, so we're gonna take a step further. Like we do a lot of things that are just simple at first, like simple geometry, not really super accurate. So you can understand the logic of how to put things together. And then as we get more accurate um, in our geometry, you'll see kind of that the construction methods are a lot more complex and hopefully you'll be able to understand it with a more fundamental knowledge of the software. So um, what we're gonna do is create, I went back into the front view. We're gonna create sort of like a facade. Um, so let's do um, something like 20 feet by 40 feet tall. Something to that effect. Planar surface. All right. I'm going to reference that surface here in Grasshopper. And then you can hide the original geometry. Anybody miss that? <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I just created, I did a curve. Right, and then I just created a planar surface with that curve. Um, then here I dropped in my surface, and I right-clicked and I said set one surface, selected it, and then once I had that surface referenced, I just went in Rhino, selected it, and did hide. That's it. Nothing super magic. Okay, so um, do you guys remember how to subdivide this? Isotrim, yes, thank you. So under surface, we go to utility, we go to isotrim, um, and we know the surface is going to be this, but what do we do with the domain? Who remembers that? Uh, number sliders. Hmm? Number sliders? No, we will need number sliders, you're right, but um, there's another piece. Remember, this is the triangle, the trifecta? Uh, divide domain squared. Yes. We're going to go to math, domain, Divide domain squared. Thank you. So this is surface utility. This is math domain. All right. So this gets plugged in here. This gets plugged in there. And then we have our subdivisions. Now the sliders are going to help us change what those subdivisions are. So I will go to... Um, I'll just create a slider. So we're going to say 0 is less than 20. Really should be 1 is less than 20. I'm going to change that. 1. Copy and paste that. We'll go to B. All right. So this thing's only like 40 feet tall or so. So I'll do like four subdivisions. And we'll break that up like this. So um, I want to point something out to you. Um, first, I'm going to show you the method we're going to use, and then I'm going to show you how we really have to, well, a way that we can achieve it um, in a little more efficient way. Um, there are a few ways of doing it, but I like to do it this way just because for me it's easier to compute. But, um, <coughs> well, no, I don't want to do it that way, actually. Anyway, I'll just show you one of, one of the issues we're going to be dealing with, and then I'll show you kind of a workaround for now, and when we get more accurate, we'll... We'll, should, we'll start doing the actual math for it, but right now, don't worry about it. So um, we've got these untrimmed surfaces. We're going to um, reduce the size of those surfaces so that we can create something that looks like our um, like a, a rectangular, rectangular or rectilinear storefront like you see in these windows up here, right? Storefront mullions, curtain wall mullions, something like that. So um, we're going to... Um, reduce the domain of that surface, and then we're gonna subtract it out. So let's go to domain. We're gonna say um, construct domain squared. Do you guys remember this one? No? Did I do this with you yet? I don't think I did, okay. All right, so this is new then. Um, so we're gonna, uh, this is under math domain. So basically what we're doing is, is reducing the size of the panel by a certain percentage. Um, so we can go to, uh, let's see here, we've got the untrimmed surface. We're going to have to also go to isotrim again. Next to the curve, we're just going to say minus. 
Construct domain squared, yes. Surface utility. Okay, so um, this one looks a little different because rather than being a triangle like that one, we actually just have to connect it like this. Now, the difference is um, the information you're seeing here, um, yeah, don't need that one. Um, the information you're seeing um, come out the other side of uh, the subsurface is something that is relative to all of the surfaces that are being plugged in, right? So it's something we need to reparametrize to those surfaces. Um, I don't expect you to understand the, the jargon, but um, anyway, there's a, there's a surface down here that's being created. What that surface is, is a one foot by one foot square. And it's a one foot by one foot square because we have, in our U direction, we're defining a value of zero as a base, and we're defining a value of one as a max. So a minimum and a maximum for that domain, right? We're reparametrizing the, the first surface to a domain that is only one foot by one foot. So, um, and that's the same thing for the V direction and the V direction. So if I took a slider, for instance, and I said zero to um, 250, and I plugged it into the max, and I started sliding it up, you would see that it's gonna start to grow up to the maximum of the surface, which is that, right? So that's a domain that's being mapped on top of the original domain. So in order for that to make sense though, um, and, and map onto each individual surface, we need to reparametrize it so that it maps. But let's go to um, S and let's click on reparametrize. And uh, this slider is no longer relevant. So what happens when you do reparametrize is that now it's saying, I've got a minimum of zero and a maximum of one, but the whole thing is selected. The difference is when you hover over S, now it's all of the surfaces instead of just the first one. Does that make any sense? Reparametrize? Um, you'll see. So basically, um, what I did there was, um, let me start with uh, the maximum. I'm going to reduce the maximum in both directions. So uh, we have a value of 0 to 1.00. Let's go with that. So we're going to plug that into U. We're going to plug it into V. And as we raise this, you'll see that it's going to start to grow on all the surfaces. OK? So reparametrizing means that you're not mapping the surface from the base of from the base corner of just one surface, you're, you're reparametrizing it so that it maps to the domain of all of those individual surfaces, okay? Um, let's see, what else? Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, for maximums, but we can do the same thing for our minimums. Um, and let's pull it down a little lower to zero, for instance. So if this starts at zero, we can actually increase the minimums as well. So what you find is um, you now have, if you, if you calibrate it properly, you have something that kind of looks like it could just be taken out of the middle of that panel. However, what do you see as the greatest inaccuracy um, or weakness of this method? Close, yeah, but what do you define by what you want to do exactly? What do I want to do with this? What what looks funny about this? It's not centered. Um, yeah, it's not exactly centered, but also the two sides are not the same size, right? So your left and right edges are smaller than your top and bottom edge. Does that seem funny to you? It's not centered correctly, though, or it's not um, spaced correctly. Right, yeah, it's not, it's not the right size. And that's because when you reduce something by a domain, it's proportional, right? It's proportional to the size of the overall frame. However, um, I, I do, I mean, like, you can, we can go through the math and set it up exactly by 
dividing by how wide each panel is and setting it up like that, but it gets dicey. So for now, I want you guys only to worry about how something looks and approximating it, and then we'll get into like the exactness of the system later. But, um, but anyway, you, the other um, inaccuracy is that when you look at one panel, right, the outer edge is only so thick, but then the right edge is actually going to be double that. So um, we can sort of work around that by creating a secondary frame around the whole thing. Um, it's not exact but it's something that we can use that is simple that we can understand at this stage um, in our understanding of this uh, system before. And there are a bunch of different ways to do that too, but we'll get to there. Um, so let's see. What we're, what we're going to do here is actually um, copy both of these. So we're going to have four separate values. Um, so I'm going to have a U min and a U max and a V min and a V max like this. The key is um, your V min should be something that you can you know visually understand. Um, your U min should be proportional to that. So if it's if your panel is twice as high, which it is, I did 20 feet by 40 feet, then you can generally go um, twice the value, so a 0.03 and a 0.06. Um, similarly, if your V max on one side is going to go um, uh, we're going to go 0 0.03, so this needs to be a 0 0.97. And then on the other side, it would be a 0 0.94. So that's about as accurate as we can get this system at this stage with our skill set in this software. Now, in the future, you can just do the math and, and measure like how many inches you want it to be and just kind of calculate it that way. Or you could just do extrusions too. There, there are a whole bunch of ways of constructing this. Um, so don't, don't feel like this is the only way. This is just like an easy way that you guys can use to create something that is visually stunning, looks about right, and with minimal amount of time. I mean, look at how many nodes we used. We, we basically used like five separate nodes. That's it. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to have to subtract these two and get a remaining surface. So let's go to um, intersect. And this is one that I always kind of um, mess up. But let's go to um, region difference. That's curves. Let's go to solid difference and see if that will work for us. Um, First beer up set. So these are listed as surfaces. Beer ups, some surfaces sometimes can read as beer ups. So we're going to take the um, base surfaces there. We're going to take these here. And there we go. So under uh, intersect, what, what's, what's the panel that we're matching? Um, mathematics, what would you do? What are you going to do? I will, it's under um, intersect, shape, solid difference. Okay, so there's our frame. Questions? Concerns? Quandaries? Yes. These? Okay, I will explain that. Um, <clears throat> so basically, um, the percentage, these are percentage values. When you reparametrize it, it changes it from an actual size to a percentage value. Does that make sense at least? So what we were doing before it was reparametrized is that one foot by one foot corner in the bottom left, um, that was the value of zero, right? It was zero here and it was one here. Um, so zero and one for a minimum and maximum created a one foot by one foot square. And as I increased it, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, when you reparametrize it, it's now a, a percentage of the overall surface for the minimum and the maximum. So I'll kind of explain it up here on the board, guys. Um, if you had a five foot by um, ten foot square, something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And you were to say, I want it to be um, twenty percent 
uh, from the left side and 20% from the right side, you would, you, you're basically cutting a foot off of the whole thing, right? So you would take a point from here and here, here and here, and it reduces that domain by 20%, which is um, 0 0.20, right? So 20% over here, 0 0.20, Like that, right? So that's that would be if this was a five foot by um, five foot by ten foot panel, that would be a foot. Um, oh, doesn't let me go back like that. Okay, point oh six. No, go back a little. Um, so same thing here on the ten foot one. If we go point two zero, it's going to be bigger, <coughs> twice as big, in fact. Still point two zero. But this one is one foot, and this one is two feet. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's the difference um, when you reparametrize it. If we didn't do that, then what we would get is a square in the bottom right corner that is um, 0 0.20 feet square. So it would be like this in this little bottom corner. And it would be 0 0.20 and 0 0.20 on that side. Does that make sense? That's what reparametrize does. Okay, now that that's clear, um, let me check how much time we did on the video here and then we'll move on. Oh, way too long, okay.